Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Saturday, April 18th, 2015, around 6.20 in the morning in Bellic, Massachusetts. It's going to be a nice and sunny day. It's going to be about 70 degrees today. Some news to report. Boston Red Sox beat the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 3-2 to two in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Ottawa Senators in overtime. Lay Habs up two games to zero. And in the other series, the Washington Cap Capitals, Nashville Predators, and Vancouver Canucks even this Stanley Cup series at one game apiece. Those series are going to go at least five games or more. And also it's Happy National Record Day. And it's the NBA playoffs start today at 12.30 p.m. on ABC and ESPN today or your local regional sports networks. And that's about it on the news. My first video subject of the day is about Super Bowl for the WCW pay-per-view that happened on February 20th, 1994. This Super Bowl pay-per-view was the fourth installment of Super Bowl, which WCW was kind of like, they were saying this was the Super Bowl of wrestling and stuff, but I didn't agree with that. But this Super Bowl was the start of three straight awesome and Great pay-per-views that any professional wrestling company has put on for pay-per-views back to back to back. The main event of this match, of this card was Nature Boy Ric Flair facing off against Vader in a Thunder Cage for the WCW World Title. Plus, they had some other great matches on this card. There was a dark match for this for this pay-per-view card, which was not seen to the pay-per-view audience. It was just seen in the crowd at Albany, Georgia at the Civic Center. It was two Colts Scorpio and Marcus Alexander and Bella Guelbeen, Sergeant Buddy Lee Pocket and James L. Wright, the State Purple Troll. <laughs> that match was not shown on pay-per-view. And calling the action for Super Bowl 4 was Tony Schiavone and Bobby the Brain Heenan. The first match was a tag team match. It was Harlem Heat Kane and Cole, who eventually became Booker T and Stevie Ray, facing off against Thunder and Lightning. This was about a 10 minute match to open up, a t up, up the pay per view. It was nothing special. Cole, who was Booker T, beat um, Thunder with a back kick by Kane, with the referee's back was turned when he was arguing with Thunder. This was, you know, kind of a decent match, but nothing to write home about. The second match was Jungle Jim Steele, who WCW was pushing as like an ultimate warrior type, but without without the face paint facing off against the equalizer. Jungle Jim Steele wins this matchup in about seven minutes with this with the Luthers press, which they called the steel move and stuff like that. And, and this was probably J Jungle Jim Steele's last big match for WCW. He was like go soon after, which was disappointing because WCW was pushing him to the moon. The next match was Terry Taylor against Diamond Dallas Page DDP with the Diamond Doll. This was a back and forth match, lasted about 11 minutes. Terry, Terry Taylor rolls up Diamond Dallas Page after Page misses a charge to hit Taylor, and Taylor was one, two, three. Nothing to write home about. DDP was still like a lower mid Carter, and Terry Taylor was basically a mid Carter at best. He was back in WCW, but you know, you didn't get any too much of a push. The next match was originally supposed to be Johnny B. Bad against Michael P.S. Hayes, because Michael P.S. Hayes turned on Johnny B. Bad on a tag team match a couple of weeks before on World Right against Harlem Heat. But Michael Hayes comes out in a wheelchair. He could not wrestle, and his partner Jimmy Jam Garvin was with him. But WCW commissioner Nick Bockwinkle says that Freebirds had a contract. Still valid for WCW, and Jimmy Jam Garvin had to take his place. Jimmy Jam Garvin was mad, says, I'm retired. You have a contract. If you don't fulfill your contract, both of you are suspended. What WCW? And then Jimmy Jam Garvin wrestles Johnny B. Bad. It was, you know, the 10 minute match. It was, it was kind of awful because Jimmy Garvin wasn't in the lane for, didn't, wasn't, wasn't in wing shape. Plus he didn't wrestle for all the year and stuff. And it was a horrible best. But Johnny B. Bad wins with a sunset flip. But after the match, um, Garvin hits him with the stunner.
which they called 911 back then. This was an awful match and stuff like that. I don't know if it would have been great if Michael P. S. Hayes would have wrestled, but I heard he was hurt and he was just playing this. That was just to put in the storyline. The next match was for the WCW TV Championship. It was Lord Steven where you go with Sir William facing off against Arn Anderson, and this was a 30 minute time limit. Usually, um, t t um, TV title matches was 15 minutes, but they were doing this 30 minutes just to like, to like, have on have a better chance of winning. And this was a classic match. It went on the whole 30 minutes, but actually, in reality, you know, it only went maybe about 26, 27 minutes. And um, Lord Stephen Wiggle wins with about six seconds left. He uses Sir Williams' umbrella for the uh, for advantage. To Pin on Anderson 1, 2, 3. This was a very classic television TV title match. Lord St Steven Regal was a great performer and stuff. He's underrated television champion. I'm very, very surprised WCW did not give him like a major push to maybe the U.S. title around this time as well. The next match was a tag team match for the WCW World Tag Team Championship. It was Cactus Jack and Max Payne facing off against Nasty Boys, Knobs and Sacks. This was about about eight, nine minutes. Um, the Nasty Boys got disqualified, so Cactus Jack and Max Payne won the match, but they did not win the titles because I, because any title in professional wrestling cannot change hands in the count out, a disqualification, or a time limit. To, to, uh, so the Nasties retained the titles afterwards, like um, all four, Members of, were fighting over the place. This feud would continue, and this was a great feud, another great match. The next match was the first of two Thunder Cage matches. The Thunder Cage was a was a cage that surrounded the Halloween area, and this was a six man tag. It was Sting, the natural Dustin Rhodes, and Front Lion Brian Pillman against Ravishing Rick Rude, who was the current. WCW International title, they had, it was the big gold belt, the former NWA belt, which Ric Flair made and one time owned. It was stunning Steve Austin, the WCW United States Champion with Colonel Robert Parker and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This was a very classic cage match. It was probably one of the, one of the best six-man cage, tag team cage matches of all time. A lot of action, pace, and stuff like that. The finishing move was happening about 14 minutes when Steen gave the body flew, flew flying Brian Pillman body prep slammed him onto Steve Austin with the flying body cross for the one two three Pillman pins Austin and afterwards all six wrestlers fight and then Ravishing Rick Rude gives the Rude awakening into Steen to set up their match at Spring Stampede 1994, this was a classic match, and the final match was also a th the in also inside the Thunder Cage for the WCW World Title it was the champion Nature Boy Ric Flair facing off against It's Time, It's Time, It's It's Fade of Time with Holly Race in his corner, and they had a special guest referee. That special guest referee was the boss, and this was a back and forth match and stuff. Originally, Vader attacked. Um, the boss actually handcuffed him for a time, but the boss ex escaped, and then he did a beating to um, Harley Race, and then Vader, um, Arn Anderson, and um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat were cheering Ric Flair on. Ric Flair gets the figure four leg lock in Vader, and Vader, and, and, and Vader gives up. He didn't give up, but like the boss told him to give him, give him up. Flair wins this match and retains the WC WCW title. This was an awesome cage match afterwards. Um, the boss attacks Vader and stuff, and then that that leads to them in like Spring Stampede 1994. And this um, Super Bowl pay-per-view was probably a, a 9 out of 10 very solid matches, especially the, the, the cage matches and also... Lord Steven Regal against Arn Anderson and Cactus Jack and Max Payne against the Nasty Boys. I didn't care about the other four matches. They were kind of filler and stuff like that. It was one thing like Jimmy Jam Garvin did not belong in the ring because he had ring rust and he he looked awful. Be 
because he wasn't he didn't wrestle in about two years and stuff and that you know it's they should have Michael PSA's face up against Johnny B. Bad. That would have been a great match. They were kind of pushing Bad, Bad as a mid card, Carter, and the rest of the card was just for fella like Terry Taylor was basically just was playing out the strain. DDP was not a star yet. He was kind of a lower mid card, kind of a jobber. He would win matches on television, but when it was paid for. for pay-per-views he would just do the jobs and like Jungle Jim Steel they were pu pushing him but he was let go and like Kane and Cole Harlem Heat were like just a lower mid card tag team at this point eventually they became Booker Ray and Stevie Stevie Ray and won several WCW World Tag Team Champions tomorrow it will be the third and final of these awesome WCW pay-per-views back to back to back, which will be reviewing Slime Slamboree 1994, a legend for union. And later on today, two more video blogs you'll be enjoying. LRTA Bus Route 16 from Lowell Kennedy Center to Chelmsford, via right Chelmsford Street. And the third and final video blog of Night Personality Profile about Mario Lemieux, um, Pittsburgh Penguins Center, Hockey Hall of Famer, and the owner of the Pens. Have a good day. Bye now.